And today we're going to be doing my powder foundation routine, which I'm so excited to show you guys because it's incredible, it's life changing, and like, will I ever use a, another liquid foundation ever again? Who even knows? What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be something we haven't done in a very long time. It's going to be a little bit of a get ready with me. Literally, you guys haven't seen me do my makeup in such a long time. So I was like, in honor of the holiday season commencing, we're going to do a little bit of a Thanksgiving get ready with me. So I'm going to show you how I will probably be doing my hair and makeup for Thanksgiving. And then I'm going to give you guys three different outfit options for Thanksgiving towards the end. So we'll have something super casual, something a little dressy cash, and and then something a little bit more dressy. I like to do these kind of get ready with me's for a lot of holidays because I think it's fun to just see how I would look on the holiday and then also for the outfit ideas because that's always super helpful. If you're wondering where you can get my cutie little robe, I have it linked in my Amazon shop. I love it so much and I think you all need it. So go check that out. So as in all my videos, everything I'm using on my face, in my hair, every outfit is going to be linked down below. So just check the description box if you guys have any questions about anything I'm using in, in the video today. For my brows, I take the pears transparent soap the box looks like this sorry i just flipped you off um i spray it with a little water and then i take a spoolie and i use this to brush up my brows then i'm gonna go in with the p louise eye base um and just use this over my whole eye to prime for eyeshadow and then also to carve out my brows. Okay, now we're gonna go in with a brow product. I'm gonna use the uh, Lime Crime Bushy Brow and just use this to fill in. Now that it's like the soap brows has your hair sticking up and you've got your eyeshadow primer on, it's super easy to just fill in any sparse areas. You use way less product and it looks so much more natural. I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and just use it to clean up any excess soap that got above the brow because let me tell you girl when you start putting on your face makeup you will have some crusty upper brow regions so which one of you has already decorated your house for christmas i want to know i want to know i have not not yet but i will very soon okay so the palette we're going to be using today is the morphe uh x manny mua glam palette it is so beautiful i've been using it like every day since i got it in my boxy charm and this highlighter wait is it this one no this one aura oh my god you guys are gonna fall in love so i wanted to show it to you because I will most likely be using this for Thanksgiving. So it's a very simple look. Nothing you haven't seen before, I promise you. But I'm gonna start off with a big fluffy brush and dip into Sophie and Boy Next Door. I don't really know why, mostly because I don't know which one to choose. And I'm just gonna use this in my transition area. So like above the crease, be super messy. Just make sure it looks really nice and blown out. See, one, two, three, you're good. So now I'm going to go into this shade, Zaya, with a Morphe M518. And we're gonna take this more uh, like tighter in the crease just to build on the dimension. Just like that, darling. See the difference? Yo, Loki, I really wanna go take a nap right now. I don't know why blending my eyeshadow is literally making me sleepy. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the shade Spellbound on this Real Techniques 203 brush and take this basically all over the lid and blend it into the crease. Don't take it too high up in the crease though. Basically, just blend the edges. And then you can go back with your Morphe M518 brush and just blend the edges again just so that they blend into that Zaya color and you have a really nice smooth transition just like so oh my god that actually looks really good on camera okay now we're going to take a flat shader brush and go into this color called Scorpio I fucking hate Scorpios Scorpio men hate Scorpio men um but we're gonna make an exception for Thanksgiving Ugh. and basically just take it and put it right on the center right just like that just swipe it and then you can start to blend it out but i really just want to keep it like spotlight eye so just keep it right on the center you can like use your brush to kind of make like an arch don't go all the way to the inner corner or to the outer corner you kind of want to just keep it in the center darling just like that just like so boo boo yes are you kidding are you vinging kidding okay so then i'm gonna take that same real techniques brush i had the spellbound color on and just go over the edges so that they're blended like so like that 
as Miss Tabitha Brown would say. Uh, then I'm going to take this little tiny micro smudge brush from Eco Tools and go into Howl, which is this dark brown color down here. You guys don't have to use the same exact palette. You, as long as you like, I feel like these are colors a lot of us have in eyeshadow form. So just do it with whatever you got. You don't have to buy a whole new palette. Um, but if you are looking for a new palette, this one is good and I do recommend it. But if you don't want to buy a new palette, don't buy a new palette, boo. Then you're going to take this and we're basically going to use this eyeshadow as like a smoky eyeliner. So make it thicker on the outer corner and kind of wing it out. We can use our makeup wipe after to like actually sharpen this up. Which we'll is make like a fake little wing to the inner corner. Just kind of taper it off. Like you don't want it to be like... Like you want it to taper off like i said yeah i know it's like really far out but we're gonna clean that up but just get it on there boo same thing on the other side and then i'm gonna take this revlon color stay eyeliner uh in black and just use this to tight line so just lift and then get it up in there between the lashes and that's gonna make your lashes look thicker do you see the difference okay so now we are going to clean up this outer edge so that we can get started on our face makeup and today we're gonna be doing my powder foundation routine which i'm so excited to show you guys because it's incredible it's life-changing and like will i ever use a, another liquid foundation ever again who even knows first and foremost milk hydro grip primer do you see this is a big ass bottle and look how much i've gone through like incredible i love it so much i take two pumps and just rub this all over my face. I love this primer for the powder foundation routine because it's like sticky, so the powder like clings to it. I found that when I use like more smoothing, like slippery silicone primers, the powder foundation just like doesn't stick and it isn't as full coverage. So this one's my favorite for this routine. So basically the concept with this is like do all your creams before you go in with the powders. Well, with like the powder foundation. So we're gonna be doing spot concealing, contouring and highlighting, cream contour and cream highlight under the foundation. You'll see it's, it's magic. So to spot conceal, I'm gonna take the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer. This is in the shade SX09. I take it on this little micro blending brush from EcoTools. Um, and this shade is good for spot concealing because it's kind of like a peachy color so it cancels out any darkness and I love it. So I take it under my eyes and around my nose because I get lots of darkness and lots of redness in these areas and you literally need like I want to show you what I did to do all of this. Like I literally you see that the side how the edges have a little I literally just went like that and that's all the product you need. This stuff is, it's like a pigment concentrate. So you need very, very, very little bit. Like literally I use this stuff every day and I've had it for years and like, I don't know when, if ever, I will ever run into this stuff. I was picking my face earlier, so lots to cover, lots to cover. Also my chin has been so red lately. Then you wanna take your beauty sponge. I use the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge, it's my favorite. And just go ahead and blend this all out. It doesn't have to be perfect but just make sure that there's not any excess product on your skin and there's no harsh edges at all. Okay, now we will go into cream contouring. I love the dual ended contour stick from Wet n Wild. Like I've really been going through this thing, but I love it and it's so cheap and like, why even spend more money on anything else? Like this does the job amazingly. I'm pretty sure it only comes in one shade though, which sucks. The shade works for me, so I'm gonna keep it cheap because honestly, I'm not even the best at cream contour. I've definitely gotten better. I can't justify buying like a super expensive one because I'm not even like that good at it, to be real. Always the goddamn blue Lexus. There's a fucking baby blue Lexus that drives past my house so many times a day and just is so loud. Like, sir, get your fucking engine checked. There's no reason that you're going 25 miles per hour and your car is that loud. Just like truly no reason. Like if his check engine light isn't on, I'm calling Lexus and complaining because something needs to be checked there. Oh, I sound like such a Karen on my block, but it's really only because I film. If I wasn't filming, I wouldn't give a shit, but it's like so annoying when I'm in the middle of a sentence in the middle of saying something super important. It's like <laughs> past my house, you know? Tell me that wouldn't frustrate you. It's like when you're talking to somebody's like, but, but, and like cuts you off. But if I'm not filming, I don't even notice it. It just happens to always be when I'm in the middle of <laughs> Oh, by the way, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Complexion Brush. It is my favorite for cream contour because you can use this big side for like most of your face and then use the small side to blend out your nose contour. And it's amazing. And the good thing about this too is like you can be pretty heavy handed with your cream contour. And then because we're gonna go over it with the powder foundation, everything's gonna be nice and smoothed out. 
So if you go a little ham, it's all good. Cause I definitely want a little ham. What the fuck is going on here? So usually I would go in with the e.l.f. camel concealer now, but lately I've been like feeling like it's a little too heavy. Cause like there's a lot of product on my face and it like doesn't blend out as good with this routine. You, normally if you're using a, a liquid foundation, then like perfect. But I'm gonna try the Instant Age Rewind concealer from Maybelline today, an old fave. It's nice and thin on the skin. This one is almost, definitely expired but like it's okay so under the eyes cupid's bow down the center of the nose center of the forehead i'm pretty sure i like just killed this like it's over it's dead this is the end of the line for this concealer for sure um and then under my contour and the only reason i do this is because there's like no product right here and without any product right there it like the powder foundation won't stick as well so do that and all those spots same like normal highlighting spots and then go ahead and blend it out with your sponge and yes i know this is like very harsh but don't worry boo don't you freaking worry it's a process you got to trust the process because i know i look insane right now but you're just gonna blend this all out and you will see when we go in with these powders how the magic happens like it's literally insane definitely came up with this whole routine by myself like i'm a magician <laughs> so annoying i know it looks crazy it looks fucking insane right now trust me i know boo i know have i ever steered you wrong before now we're gonna go in with a loose powder my favorite loose powder you should all know this the fit me loose powder i've been using the number i used to use uh 05 fair for like ever now i use 10 fair light and it is so much better so make sure there's no creases under your eyes go in with your sponge and the powder and we're gonna go into all of the areas we would normally like bake and highlight so i'm gonna go under my eyes set it and then take it down the sides of my nose and like put it like to bake down the center of my nose center of the forehead keep it up like basically everywhere we put that concealer just now we're gonna go ahead and bake and then mama you're gonna get your powder foundation and my powder foundation this is like not sponsored by maybelline but it totally should be like maybelline hit me up because i am a stan but the maybelline superstay foundation powder like this one has hit pan this one has hit pan i'm obsessed and i take this with the artiste palm brush very expensive brush but like take any flat top kabuki like the sigma f80 would be good i just love this because it's like so big I, I can cover a big area and i basically just dunk my brush in and then all the spots i start off all the spots that have like the contour powder like anything the loose powder hasn't touched and i just press it and then once it's on there pressed then i start to like buff and like look beautiful like look at this compared to amazing like what so as you're putting on the powder foundation, you're also like taking off the baking powder, like buffing it in and it looks incredible. Like, are you kidding? Same on the forehead and look at that. We have a beat face, like one, two, three. Are you kidding? I love this routine so much, especially if you, if you have oily skin. I have like combo skin, so like pretty combo, more leaning towards oily. So like this is a perfect foundation routine for me. It also feels a lot lighter on the skin. Like it doesn't, without that full layer of foundation, it just feels a lot lighter on the skin and I freaking love it. Okay, like I said, not sponsored by Maybelline, but it should be because now I'm gonna go in with the Maybelline City Bronzer. Look how much I love this thing. And I take it on the NYX number 8008 brush. It's like a duo fiber blush brush. And I just go everywhere. We contoured. I do like kind of take it over this line a little bit just to like soften it. Um, but if you want it to be super structured, you don't have to do that. Around the forehead, you don't even need much either because we did have that cream contour. So you're pretty much contoured. It's just to kind of warm up the skin a little bit more. And then I take my Morphe nose contour brush which is this one and I just go ahead and contour my nose with the powder yes and then my favorite blush at the moment is definitely this one from Patrick Ta it's she's seductive it is so so beautiful pricey but so beautiful um and I just take it on like an angled large brush blush brush and I just put it on my cheeks it blends beautifully into the bronzer while still like giving you a nice flush of color you guys should know I'm not like too big of a blush fan I really like it to just be like a slight flush but mostly just blend into my bronzer so I go for these more like muted rosy tones and it looks so pretty apply too much blush you can just take that brush you put your powder foundation on with just go over it and you're good to go boo boo now 
that that is done, we can quickly just put a little bit of color on the uh, lower lash line. Okay, I don't know. It's just like a little mini blendy brush. And I'm gonna take that Zaya color and we're just literally gonna put a little smokage on the lower lash line, nothing crazy. Just add a little bit of dimension, see that? Nothing too fancy. It just kind of balances out the eye a little bit. But once you do that, now we can go in and highlight and I definitely am going to use the Nova highlighter in here. But what I like to do is go in with my setting spray first, Morphe Continuous Mist Setting Spray, the best one in the biz. Do a nice dousing of that. Especially because this is a powder foundation routine, you need the setting spray to like melt it all into the face. Then I take a fluffy like highlighty brush, go in and apply it right on top of that setting mist and it's going to make your highlighter look so much more blinding. You guys might be a little disappointed to learn that I do not highlight my cheekbones anymore. So we're just going to do the center of the face, Cupid's bow nose and the inner corners of the eye but that's it i find that uh highlighting the cheekbones just doesn't just doesn't really flatter the face as much as we all would like it to it just kind of adds texture you just don't need it i don't think if you want to do it by all means boo do you but i don't and i i would encourage you guys to just like try it one day like try one day not highlighting your cheekbones and tell me how you feel about it i was just as shocked as you when i realized i liked the way it looked better i was honestly like no way there's no way i'm not gonna i'm just gonna not highlight my cheekbones and then i just stopped completely okay so now we're gonna do some lashes these are a very reused pair of kiss number one lashes but you guys know well you guys should know that that's my favorite lash ever and i'm always gonna use kiss number one so i'm not even gonna break out a new pair because i'm just staying home today i'm gonna just use these I'm gonna just use these old ones because you can do that. You know, this is a real get ready with me. You can definitely like, if you ever, if you're new to lashes and you didn't know, you can reuse your lashes as long as you take care of them the right way. And by take care of them, I just mean like put them in a safe place when you're done using them and peel off the glue when you want to reuse them because you can literally reuse lashes like 10 different times. I've reused lashes for so long and they still look just as good. Save your lashes guys. Um, and I'm using the Eyelore. 18 hour lash glue this one's actually really good in the black color i always use black lash glue because i just honestly think it looks better than clear get a nice little layer on there let them sit out while i do my mascara i'm gonna use the lash princess false lash effect mascara today i love this mascara for days with and without lashes it's just a great mascara just do a light coat so that your lashes are the same color as the fake lashes and to add some volume to your lower lashes. I know a lot of people that don't put any mascara on their lower lashes. I'm like, girl, what? Never heard of it. I love pumping up my lower lashes with some mascara. See that? See the difference? Love. And the trick to applying lashes the easiest way is to just wait until the glue is like basically almost completely dry and then pop it on and it'll stick on so much easier than if the glue is too wet. And always like look down into a mirror because then you can like see where the lashes are going a lot easier. Easy peasy, lemon fucking squeezy. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so now we're gonna let them sit. And then once they're like completely dry after we do our lips, I will curl them together like my lashes and the fake lashes. Honestly, you guys, I'm so shocked at like, like this, my makeup always comes out good, but like this is like extra, extra good. Like, I don't know, something about being on camera took it up a notch um also i like to take my makeup wipe and just wipe the makeup off of my birthmark just so you can see it better she's cute she's popping i'm gonna do an old classic cold brew nyx suede matte lip liner look like i'm obsessed with this thing and for gloss i'm gonna go in with the milani soft rose keep it full lip gloss oh my god a fave and i love doing this for something like thanksgiving because this lip liner is really long wearing. So throughout the day, like as you're eating, all you have to do is pop on this lip gloss again and you will be good to go on lip touch-ups. Okay, final step is to just curl these lashes. You see the difference? They're like up now, much better. Okay, so that's the makeup. Now let's get on to doing this hair.
Okay, you guys, I went and got a coffee. I went and got a coffee because I really was like falling asleep. And now we're gonna do my hair. So I have my flat iron and my curling iron red to get because my roots are a little frizzy. I blue dry my hair this morning after I washed it, but I didn't like style it at all. So it's a little frizzy. I mean, it's actually a lot fucking frizzy, but first and foremost, we are going to spray a little heat protectant so that we're safe, you know, so that we're safe. I'm in a season of very healthy hair and I'm not trying to change that. Uh, a lot of you guys asked me how I curl my hair, so today I will show you. But I have a new hair product that I discovered that you guys need to know about. Like, it's a must. I section off this bottom layer of hair. Let's just brush it through real quick. So basically, just take a chunk of hair. Um, this is for my girls with really kinky curly hair like me. Take your flat iron and just straighten the root just so that everything stays nice and, nice and smooth. This is gonna eliminate frizzies. And then take your curling iron and curl away from your face, right? Dragging it straight through, holding it vertically. Leave the ends out, right? Hold it, one, two, three. And then pull it and pull the ends through the curling iron and it's gonna leave them straight but it's also gonna smooth them out because it's touching that heat. And then you're basically just gonna do that for every section. We'll be back in a second to show you the hairspray I use when I'm done with each section. Straighten the root real quick just to make sure that nothing gets frizzy. And then curl, I do alternating sections. So like this one I'll do away from my face again. And then this one I will do towards my face. And when you do alternating sections like that, it actually like adds volume and differentiation to your hair because sometimes when I curl it all in the same direction, I feel like it um, it like all lumps together in one curl and I kind of hate it. Like I want there to be like variation. So curl one towards your face, one away from your face and then keep switching. And if you have to go back on the ends just to like smooth it out a little, that's fine too. And if you don't have like frizzy curly hair like I do, you won't have to do the flat iron part. That's just for me so that my hair doesn't frizz basically. Because if I didn't like flat iron the, the roots like that, then my hair would be a mess. And then, okay, so now that the section is done, I take this hairspray, the Kevin Murphy Anti-Gravity Hairspray. It is incredible. It adds so much, well, not so much, but it adds shine and volume to your hair and keeps the curl in place. It's incredible. My camera battery is dying, so I'm gonna curl some of my hair while this other battery charges, and then I'll be back to show you guys like the front pieces, you know? Okay, BRB. Okay. <laughs> I know I look crazy, but now it's time to do the top section. Okay, so I'm gonna do a middle part, but you do you, boo, whatever you want. Give this video a thumbs up if you use anything other than a comb to part your hair, because I can never find a comb. I just use whatever pointy thing is closest. Has it been scissors before? you damn right it has. Has it worked out? Every time, I've never had anything go bad, luckily, thank God. Just gonna clip this section away, and then we're basically just gonna be working like from the bottom up. So take this section, clip away the rest, and then this is like where the flat iron really comes in handy because like the frame of my face is super frizzy. So just take a little sections and flat iron it so it's all nice and smooth, and then. I'm gonna put the curling iron under and then curl away from my face leaving the bottom out you don't have to hold these sections as long um, just like that the top section I just do all of them kind of away from my face because I don't want hair in my face basically oh man I feel like I've been at this vanity for hours I kind of have like between this morning blowing out my hair and then now filming this get ready with me. I low key have been at this vanity for the majority of the day. Spray it and then put it away. Next. Yep, same thing for this side, you guys. For some reason, I think it's because it's my right side. This part is like harder. For some reason, like 
it's harder to straighten the root on the side. I don't know what it is. Maybe I need to put the flat iron in my other hand. It just never gets as straight. I don't, I don't know why. Somebody explain that science to me. Okay, now that all of the curling is done, I'm going to take a little bit of Moroccan oil just on the ends because they are straight and they do tend to look um, a little fried sometimes. Um, and then just take your fingers and rake it through your hair and fluff it up and loosen up those curls. If you have any pieces that you want to recurl, go for it. But it's really just like a beachy wave kind of ordeal but I love it nice and voluminous I swear to god it's this hairspray that gives me all of this volume and shine like this hairspray if there's nothing else you buy in this video get this hairspray Kevin Murphy anti-gravity spray it's incredible I'm obsessed with it but like do you see the level of this hair yes mama okay you guys so that's hair that's makeup now we are going to get into some outfits so let's go find some clothes Okay, you guys, outfit number one is definitely the most casual, and by that I mean the easiest. So basically, I just paired this really cute beige sweater dress from Lulu's. I love it because it's a nice midi length, and it's a really nice ribbed sweater material. So it is nice and warm and cozy, but still super figure flattering and soft and comfortable. Like, obviously, we're going to be eating a lot on Thanksgiving, so if you're going to do a dress like this, I definitely recommend going with a soft fabric, nothing that's going to be, like, too clingy on your body because this is so nice and stretchy. If I have four plates nothing I mean you'll be able to see the fupa a little bit more but that'll be okay because I will still be comfy in it and I just paired it with my favorite pair of all white sneakers these are from Alexander McQueen but I will have some more affordable dupes linked down below for you guys but the star of the show is definitely this really nice soft cute as hell dress from Lulu's basically the idea for this outfit is pair one of your favorite sweater dresses with a pair of all white sneakers and you are good to go the easiest outfit for Thanksgiving and you will still look so so put together and so cute I'm gonna be wearing the same jewelry for all of the outfits but I just have on this pair of little gold hoops from Forever 21 and then my chain necklaces this one is from Forever 21 and this one is a set from Miss Lola I'll link everything down below for you guys to shop you guys need these little like rope chain hoop earrings I absolutely love them and I think you guys will too but yeah if you are a sporty sneakers girl like me this is definitely a good outfit for you because girl I don't want to be wearing heels in my grandma's living room you know what I mean like we obviously want to look cute for the holiday but we don't need to do the most with the heels and all that I obviously have some outfits if you want to do the most with the heels but for me I'm definitely a sneakers girl so this is my kind of vibe so yeah that is outfit number one the easiest one Okay, my next outfit is for all the girls that want to wear a pair of jeans on Thanksgiving. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, why would you want to wear a pair of tight ass high rise jeggings while you're sitting around all day eating? Well, if you have these specific jeggings on, you will not think twice about it because they are so comfy. You will not want to unbutton them after your third plate. They are the perfect Thanksgiving jean. These are the American Eagle Curvy Highest Rise Jeggings. They are so comfy, so high rise, like you can do activities in these ladies. So they're super movable super comfortable I'm not gonna say they feel like leggings because they obviously are like a really nice jean but they do feel like super duper comfortable jeans which I think is a good trade-off for Thanksgiving and then I paired these jeans with this oversized cropped cardigan from Old Navy this is so cute so soft so festive like perfect Thanksgiving brown color and then to top it off I went ahead and put on these booties these are from Soul Society they are a black suede and then they have the matching like brown heel on them which ties the whole outfit together I have the same jewelry on as the last outfit as I said before and I think this outfit is perfect for Thanksgiving because you're a little bit dressed up super cute but still casual and comfy and like not all done up like if you got to help out in the kitchen this is definitely an outfit you can do that in you're not gonna feel too fussy and also I love it because if you if your fupa if you ate a little too much and your fupa does get a little larger than you intended then you can just take this sweater and just Pull, pull it all down and then you're good girl you know what I mean <laughs> also the heel on this boot is not too high at all they're a very comfortable shoe so even though it is a little bit of a heel you're dressing it up but you're still so comfortable 
Okay, ladies, the last outfit is for my girls that do want to dress up, whether you're meeting your boyfriend's family for the first time or if the pandemic just got you down and you're like, finally, a holiday, I can get glam. This is the outfit for you, boo. <laughs> so you might recognize it from my Shein haul. It's this really cute, like, balloon sleeve uh, side tie mock neck crop top. That was a lot of words in one shirt, but it is super cute, so we'll let it live. And then paired with this snake print pleather skirt, it is stretchy however so even though this looks like something that you would not want to wear on Thanksgiving because it'll be way too tight it actually has a good amount of stretch it is like very elasticated or elasticized so I think you guys will actually really love it and then I just paired it with my favorite thigh high heeled boots they are a pointed toe these are from boohoo if you've got thick legs like me these are the boots to go for I will link them down below obviously I'm pretty sure I'm a size 8 in these but yeah such a cute outfit for Thanksgiving the colors are so festive like you're gonna look like a shiny glazed turkey you know what I mean girl <laughs> even though this is more glam you're still gonna be food friendly because the skirt is stretchy so you can put a lot of pie in this little pooch right here you know so even though I talked shit before about not wanting to dress up too much for Thanksgiving this is totally something I would wear for Thanksgiving too it just really depends on my mood if I wake up that day and I'm like I want to be a bad bitch then this is the outfit I'm going for you guys know what I mean same jewelry as before but overall such a cute outfit so glam so chic I absolutely love it even if you don't wear this for Thanksgiving it's such a good outfit for like the night before Thanksgiving when everybody parties even though it's probably not even gonna happen this year or if you're going to like a cute Friendsgiving that might be a cute outfit for it but overall I love this whole look okay you guys that is going to be it for today's video I hope you enjoyed this Thanksgiving get ready with me here is the finished makeup look hair look and half of one of the outfits let me know down in the comments which of the outfits was your favorite what is your vibe this year are you going super casual or are you going dressy casual are you going full-on glam because fuck it girl let me know down in the comments I will also have everything I used hair makeup and all of the outfits linked down below with all of my details for you guys to easily shop if you're interested if you're new here and you watch all the way through to the end you might as well hit the subscribe button and join our fam. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. My handles are superashley127 on all of my platforms. I love you all so much. And I will see you in my next video. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Uh.